welcome to Two Moms at a Camera. We are still Cheers. drinking vodka coolers. Yes, we are. In toasting summer, the end of summer, we've had yep. a great one. And so, just one second. We gotta after we cheers, we have to drink. drink. We do. That's what we were told. We have started to notice a few more moms watching our our channel. Yay! Yay, moms! And when we set out to do this, we really did want to appeal to moms as well. And we promised mom content. We did. And we're going to do it. We're going there. We are going there. So I'm really happy that we're going there. Um, we're going to be very tasteful. Uh, our first topic today, we're going to talk about sex and intimacy after parenthood. Right. After becoming parents. Right. Uh, don't worry, we're not going to get all uh, gross. No, it's still PG, people. Okay. Still PG. Just because there's Nobody sex in it, it doesn't mean that it's not PG. Okay. But what, what we're going to tell you, for those of you who have young children, or those of you who are going to have children, we're going to change your life. We are going to change your life. You will have sex again. Yes. You will. Okay. The main point of this is that you must establish a pattern of behavior yes so that your children will not know when you are having sex. right because they don't want to know they don't want to know they don't you don't want them to know, to know. Yes. and more importantly if you don't establish a pattern of behavior what's going to happen is that you will never have sex no or, <laughs> or when you do the whole house is gonna know. No, that, that that doesn't happen in my house. Okay, so this is what I would suggest. Number one, put a lock on your bedroom door it's and use important. it. Yes. And don't just use it when you're gonna have sex. Use it all the time. Yes. Right. When you're changing, when you wanna have a bath and not right? have people come in your room. Lock your door so the kids get used to mom and dad's door is locked. Because I'll tell you a story about this. We waited too late to put a lock on the door. We put a lock on our door when we had teenagers. And we thought we were being really smart. So it was one of those little latch locks at the top of the door from the inside. So we put the lock on the door. And, you know, it makes a little noise when you lock the door. We didn't think anything of it. I kid you not, three days after we put that lock on the door, there was a Modern Family episode about... <laughs> <laughs> Phil and uh, what's her name? I can't remember. Putting a lock on their bedroom door, and every time the kids heard the lock, they knew <laughs> mom and dad were gonna have right. sex. Right, right. That's what I was saying. But Nikki, that happened the same week we put the lock on our door. <laughs> so now, not only do we want to lock the door, but we have to lock the door silently, quietly. Do you need some like white notes? No. What I'm saying is, put a lock on your door from the time you have toddlers. Yes. They will never suspect anything. They will anything never know. Okay. And guess what? You will establish the boundaries of this is our private right. space and this is your private right. space. And they get used to knocking on the door. Now, that takes me to my next point. Close your door often and ask your kids to knock. Right. Right? The other thing is... Um, <laughs> this is funny. So, we have a big soaker tub in our ensuite bathtub. My husband is probably one of the few men I know that loves to take a bath. He's a metro man. He's in the bath <laughs> almost every day, soaking in the tub. More he than also me. likes shoes. And he likes shoes, yes. <laughs> so, usually Friday nights after dinner, we'll go upstairs and have a bath together. The kids are used to this. It's not always about intimacy. It's usually, it started off because it was the only place that we could actually talk have a conversation. <laughs> uninterrupted was sitting in our <laughs> bathtub. And so that's what we used to do all the time. If we had anything on our mind or whatever, we'd go have a bath. So the kids are used to that. And that's something that did work for us because sometimes that does lead into intimacy and the kids aren't thinking, oh, mom and dad are upstairs doing it. Yeah. Right. So that's the other thing. Now, Nikki, you have um, some success with music, TV, whatever. Yeah, and there's always white noise playing because you don't, I mean, and that's another thing too. You don't want to be putting on violin music every time you have sex because the music is going to wave down the halls and they're going to figure it out. <laughs> that, well, yeah, whatever you're into, um, that heavy metal, whatever. The, when that music comes on, cue the sex or the whatever. So you want to have, you want to switch it up. So you want to have the TV on, you want to have, we have a noisemaker in our room that 
is actually a white noise machine. We have one of those. We'll too. put that on. Ceiling fans. Well, we have that on all the time. Right. Um, but we'll change up the scenario so the kids don't know if we're watching TV, if we're listening to music. But, but okay, but hold up. The hard part is we have a TV in our room, so do you. If you yeah. put the TV on and you put it on loud to kind of drown out things, how do you not watch it? I know! I know! I catch myself watching it! I know! It. And I'm thinking, oh! Interesting, especially if you got the news <laughs> on, you're like, oh my god, that's terrible. And then you'd have to switch back my to where you're watching. You're watching TV, no, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have to be careful. Or, same with music. Like, I'll find, like, if a really funny song comes on, like, I can't think of an, an example right now, but there's been occasions where a song will come on that is just funny. Yeah. And I listen. I laugh anyway during these times at, at very inappropriate times. And I, yeah, I can't help myself if it's something. There was that song. What was it called? The one that it was an Italian song or the bubbly, boobly, bubbly something. Or I have other. no idea what she's talking you know, about. I, I, yeah. It was. It's. It's one of these songs that's very like. It's funny when you listen to it. And yeah, one time it came on, and that was it for me. I, I was done. But if you can, this is another thing. Like. Where, where we live, a lot of the houses and subdivisions when they built when we were buying, they have, you know, three or four bedrooms all together. Now I've noticed a lot more houses being built <clears throat> with the master bedroom on the main floor or off on off one side. side. So if you can do that, I would recommend doing that. It's hard when they're little though because well, you want to hear them. So when you're a new parent and your bedroom's off in left field, you know what? Still buy the house and maybe make that your guest room for now and take one of the other rooms because they will grow up. And you'll have teenagers and who won't go to it. sleep. That's yeah. the thing. They don't go to sleep. So we used to wait for the kids to go to sleep before we would we would have sex. But now they don't go to sleep. And I think so, too, not only teenagers, but I think one of the worst mistakes parents can make, and I know that there's a lot of controversy over this, but there's a lot of mothers who take their children to bed with them. And I realized very early in my marriage that that is a deal breaker for us. I mean, that, to me, th your bed and your intimacy with your husband is important. And babies do not sleep well. Parents do not sleep <clears throat> well when there's children in the bed. So I'm not saying that they're not circumstances maybe when they're sick or there's, you know, there's They're issues if they've stages. had a really bad experience <clears throat> that they need that comfort. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the everyday. It used to be my youngest daughter, Mandy. She loved to be in bed with me. And she'd wake up like 3 in the morning and crawl into bed with me. And I was just too tired to pick her up mm -hmm. and do anything about it. We did the same and thing. And the, the problem was there is that she had terrible dreams. So she'd be literally shaking when I was cuddling her. And... I said to my doctor, I said, I don't know what to do because I'm not sleeping when she's in mm -hmm. bed with me. It's a nightmare. She, she was one of those kids that flailed and did everything. And he said, you know what? You pick her up and you take her back to her room and you lie down with her. In her bed. In her bed yeah. until she falls asleep. So my suggestion is if they come to you and they want comfort, take them back to their room so they experience comfort in their own space so they understand this is my room this is where I belong sometimes I need mom and dad and I need that extra comfort and that's okay but it doesn't happen in their room in their bed use those occasions for like movie nights or whatever where afterwards they're going back to their own room and I'm telling you the other thing that I would really say that really like for us saved our marriage time and time again is date nights have a date night get out of the house, get away from your kids, and enjoy each other. And if you don't have a babysitter, then put them to bed and spread out a little blanket on the floor and have a picnic and watch a nice movie. Make sure you have that time with your significant other because when the children leave home, you'll be looking at the person across from you going, who the heck are you? you? And I don't have a relationship anymore. So, so. I'm gonna just say you're welcome. Yes. You, <laughs> you're welcome. You are welcome. You and remember. Us. <laughs> establish a pattern of behavior yes so that your kids will never know and get a noisemaker get, get, a, get a TV in your room play just don't music, watch it and make sure it's not it's a pattern of daily use don't make it just for those intimacy times okay, okay. and Cheers good luck with that. that yeah thanks for watching mm -hmm.